0508, market takes a terrible crash. The worst recession since the Great Depression. How bad did it affect you? <laughs> Real bad. Um, so I had about, by, by 2010, out of the, out of the um, 12 properties that, no, out of the, the 11 properties that I, I had, um, 10 of them were in foreclosure. Really? Yeah. The only property that um, I made sure never got touched, no matter what, was, you know, was the house where my mom's was at. Uh, everything else, I just stopped paying the bills because I just didn't have it. So um, what I ended up doing around that time, because cash flow was really bad, I ended up, um, let, me, let me take it back a second about how everything was falling apart. You know, um, like I had bought, you know, big, big house in Jersey, you know, out in Englewood Cliffs. Your personal home. Personal home. Mm -hmm. um, I had cars, watches. I used to throw parties. I used to, you know, it, it was nothing for me. I don't even drink like that, but I was going out two, two three nights a week, dropping 1500 a night, you know, just because that was the thing to do because of people like you, you know, <laughs> selling the culture, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and I bought into it. So, um, but it was really, it was really bad. It was a really, um, I had to, I actually had to kind of step away from real estate for a minute. What do you mean? Um, there was, there was no money to be made in real estate. You know, um, the rents were low. Mm -hmm. um, the banks weren't lending. The, um, the pro um, property values were, were constantly decreasing, so there was no way to, um, to flip to make money. So um, there, were two, there were two strategies that I used for cash flow. Um, and the first, the first thing that I did was I looked at the um, depressed commercial real estate market. So. Um, there was a property, there was a, um, like a 3,000 square foot space um, on Broadway, Broadway and like um, and 3rd Street or whatever, um, wherever over there in, in Soho. And I basically rented that place for like $4,000 and I used to throw parties in there. So I did that, I did that for about a year before they shut me down uh, for cash. And the other thing that I did for cash while you know, there was no money in real estate, is I ended up going to India and um, getting a, a hair connect, and I started importing um, Indian hair weaves. So, um, you know, I was doing that for like two, three years. You is know, there money in that? There was. Held you over? Hell, yeah, I did pretty well with that, you know. Um, so no matter how bad the economy is, Women are gonna do their hair. No, no, <laughs> two things. No matter how bad the economy is, people are going to party. So I provided space for that. And no matter how bad the economy is, women are gonna do their hair. So I provided, you know, I provided that as well. You said the majority of your properties were in foreclosure. Yes. Did you lose any? Not a, not one. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, I think that it's a, a, a lesson for anyone thinking about going into business. And I don't want to just gloss over it. No matter how well you're doing, I don't care if you are rolling in the dough. I always say in times of peace, you prepare for war. Because at any given moment, something that is completely unexpected can happen and can completely change your fortune. Yeah. I remember myself, like all other business owners, 08, 09, 10, 11, those were difficult, difficult years that you just couldn't predict. But it could be anything. So please, if you're in business, buckle down, always make sure you have a reserve. Always make sure that you're thinking 
10 steps in advance because anything can come and change the course of your good fortune. You said these homes were in foreclosure. You didn't lose any of them. You're not paying them. Educate me. How do you not lose a home and you're not paying on it? You fight. You know, you fight. You know, I, I did it. I did it all. Um, as I said, I, I had the, I had the hustles going on um, mm -hmm. with the hair and the event space. Um, I, I was Airbnb. I was Airbnb in my, my, my house. And, and staying at, at a friend's house while people were living in my house. Um, you know, just paying lawyers, um, renegotiating with banks. Oh, the banks hate me. <laughs> you know, um, I've renegotiated, I probably um, renegotiated about three or four million dollars that I made banks eat, you know, like for modifications or, or just making deals with them. Um, I had home equity lines of credit that went to collection agencies. As soon as it went to collection agencies, I'd I'd wait a, like a month or two because they, first they called like, "Hey, give us fifty, give us sixty percent of the money, give us give us forty percent, give us thirty percent." Um, I had this one, I had a um, I had a home equity line of credit that they sent to a collection agency that um, I owed them like a million dollars on it. And I ended up paying them just like a hundred thousand dollars to uh, to get the um, to get the them off get them off the lien. Yeah. Yeah. So so basically, basically I I ended up making nine hundred thousand dollars on that deal. Um, I had to pay tax on it, you know. No, excuse me. I had to show I had to show the income on tax, and you know I, I'd expense it other places and and pay the taxes of wh of whatever. But um, bottom line is. That's nine hundred thousand dollars in debt that I was able just to wash, just by you know negotiating, you know find, you know writing hardship letters and 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 learning the system and stuff like that. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message feel free to share. Peace and love.